I've been in the gig economy for over six years now, and there are five changes that I think all of us gig workers face. Find out what they are on this segment of the Gig Geezer. Now, if this is your first time checking out the Gig Geezer, hey, thanks for coming by. And if you are a returning visitor of the Gig Geezer, hey, thanks for coming back. And if you would not mind, if you're first time visitors of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up. At everybody, hey, hit that, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. This segment of the Gig Geezer is about five changes that all of us gig workers face while we're out here doing our daily gig hustle. Now, I say this with some qualification because I have been in the gig economy for over six years. Currently, I am active on 10 apps, about to add an 11th app, and I've shared on the gig user uh, the type of money I've made in the gig economy since, um, mainly since 2018, but I've also shared on, almost on a daily basis money that I've made over the last two calendar years dating back to January 2021. And so I'd like to think with some qualification, what I'm sharing, I can help you gain some perspective on um, your gig hustle or our gig hustle on a daily basis. Now, um, what I'm about to share is not really profound. What I'm about to share is not earth shattering, but these are things that I think that we, can, we may all agree upon are some of the things that we have to take into consideration among the many changes. And by the way, today being September 20, 2022, the last day of summer, and we're about to go into the first day of fall, which tomorrow, which by the time this segment of the Gig Geezer comes out, um, will be will be in fall season. So, you know, changes occur as always. But the first change that I'd like to talk about are the apps and technology. There are, there are constant changes with the apps that we use. And if you ask, if you ask just about any gig app company, um, what they will tell you, one of the first things that they'll tell you, they are first and foremost a technology company. That's right. They are a technology company because of the research and the data that they're gathering to be used in, inco in cooperation with other technology that is available to create solutions in which they disperse a product out to a, a very large scale, either, either being customers or drivers. Now, the other th reason why these companies use the term technology company is something that they also hide behind in the way they treat us gig workers. And there's enough, there's enough in the news out there in which companies are being challenged um, in court and in legislation um, uh, in that um, they are being challenged in how they treat us drivers in terms of pay, work conditions, you name it. Now, Uber, for example, tells everyone that they're a technology company. But what they've done is that they have, they, they create a solution in which they created um, a demand where someone um, seeks a ride from another driver, not being a cab driver. And Uber pairs the rider with the driver. And this is done through an algorithm that, that figures out and predicts um, estimation arrival times and pickup times and also calculates to a driver how much they will get paid if they accept this ride. This is all done through an algorithm. Now, as we know, Uber's impact has been such that it supposedly disrupted the cab industry. And I talk about the cab industry somewhat intimately because at one time as a struggling college student over 30, 35 years ago, I hustled as a cab driver back home in Houston. And I remember the days of when cab rides were dispatched by radio. And what I mean by being dispatched by radio, there was a radio that we had in a car. Um, we turned it to a channel, two or three different channels, and um, rides were dispatched to the driver. Um, for example, dispatch would say um, in Houston, West Timer 10, West Timer 10, you respond West Timer 10, and they'd give you an address. You say West Timer 10, clear an acknowledgement, and then you'd go to that address, presumably to get that ride. Now, that's if you did it correctly. There were people like me, though, who would hear that address being dispatched and would steal the ride from another driver. 
<laughs> so um, anyway, that's that's another that's 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 just good old days and all and good old hustling. Um, but that was back in the mid to late 1980s. And what um, these company, these ride hailing companies done is they solved the problem of rides rides being stolen because now they're being dispatched through a phone. Um, and so you can't steal what's only been sent being sent directly to someone. But also there's monitoring of the driver's progress. They're, they're coordinating um, GPS where you are wherever you are in that area, along with where the customer is, and they're monitoring all this information, gathering all this information in terms of um, um, driving time there, driving time to the um, drop-off location, and then, you know, customer feedback. Um, how much did the drive, as again, how much did the driver accept that, um, that fare for? And so this is all a part of that algorithm that we're talking about, the technology aspect. Now, with the advent of GPS, smartphones, um, there's there's also been the um, the development of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, as you know, is supposedly um, the use of computers, the the use of the use of mechanisms that are not human to perform the same tasks. And so um, there's also mechanical learning. Mechanical learning is pretty much what it is it's 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 the use of it's the salt it's the solving of things through ma um, mathematical formulas very complex math mathematical formulas in order to um, uh, to calculate uh, predictions of arrival time predictions of preparation time if it's food uh, preparation um, arrival times to the customer um, this is all done as a part of that algorithm now, I'm not going into specific specifics because really I'm not qualified to talk about that. Um, admittedly, it's been it's been a long time since I've attempted calculus. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually taught math to students, and that's been almost 20 years ago. But I understand it in, in the concept that these are these are broad, very technical con these are broad and very technical things that are being done to create this user-friendly app as we know as uber uber eats lyft doordash grubhub bike squad instacart you name it whatever's out there that's how this is done now for us drivers these apps have provided us um provided a lot of people means by which we make money and some of us do quite well some of us do quite bad some of us do you know what's in between but the fact is that this has created an economy of it uh, within the broader economy, within the broader workforce, by which um, many of us have given up W two jobs. But know this: with with the with the constant change of apps and technology, there is an end game with many of these companies. The end game for many of these companies is profitability. But the way they see profitability is not through humans doing it; it's through robotics. And there's a lot of there's a there's a there are actual there are actual test markets out there with the use of robotics. There's um, Uber Eats. There's Uber that did the driverless car. There there's um, DoorDash that's entered into some agreements for robotics. Um, a lot of these gig, gig gig app companies have agreements in the works or already on deck in which they are incorporating all of that data and all that algorithm material to be used in robotics, the artificial intelligence factor, the mechanical learning factor. So keep that in mind. We're, this is not forever for humans, but at some point, we are gonna have to continue in our adaptation. We're gonna have to continue in changing along with how the environment is, or we're gonna be left behind. Or we may have to adapt by coming up with an end game. So keep that in mind. I know I spent a lot of time on that, but this is something that we have to keep. This is the this is a reality for us as gig workers. Now the next change is customers. Customers change. The customers change day in day out. There's no there's nothing consistent that you can say about customers other than the fact that they are the reason by which we have reason to come out here and do this gig work, whether it is through rideshare or delivery, last mile delivery. Now, um, customers change in their buying habits. 
customers change in the demand that they create. Customers change um, um, just just by by um, according to weather conditions, um, seasons. There's nothing there's nothing constant about customers in terms of their habits and all that. But what is known is, as I've shared with the algorithm, all this stuff is gathered as data. All this is gathered as data and become points of measurement for these gig app companies. What I will say though is that as you're out there with your daily gig hustle, and I've shared this as well, and others have pointed out. Now, when you're out there, you may work one area, you may work another area. And there are times that that, you know, one area is pretty good for you for that day, for part of that day, for that week or that month. But at some point you got to change because that area may not be the hot area. And so you have to be attuned to what's going on. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, September 19, I went out for the evening hustle. Believe it or not, while I may have earned the money that I earned yesterday, I went the first hour without making a single quarter. Then I just happened to catch um, an Instacart order that was for pretty good money, as you see here on the screen. And then I caught a and then I caught a Uber Eats order, as you see here on the screen. I um, stacked them together. I dropped off the Uber Eats order, but then the Instacart order took me into an area that I had not worked in all over a year. Well, that happened to be, <laughs> I was thinking that I was gonna be coming back to the area that I norm, or at least a part of the zone that I would normally work. But then afterward, I caught a um, Instacart order that was for this amount here. And then I caught this, uh, then I caught a um, waiter slash bike squad order for this amount here. And that ended my evening hustle. Now, I lucked out, I lucked out, but I was willing, I was open and willing to go with the change because that was the area where the orders were. I had an order that took me to an area, but then I was open not to, not to be so dead set on coming back to the region that I was normally working, but I was open to accept orders from other apps in order to still make the money that I make. That's what I mean by adapting to change with the customers. Now, we've talked about summer slowdowns, but you gotta keep in mind with summer, what you've gotta keep in mind with the summer slowdown. For a lot of folk who came on YouTube and talk of summer slowdown, it is because it was the first time they experienced it. Now, many folk came on in the year 2020, right at the start of the pandemic. In fact, the greater majority of the folk who are in the gig economy came on at that time. And I'll give you an example as proof. In 2018, according to DoorDash, they had on, they had roughly 300,000 people on, active on the app as drivers. By 2021, DoorDash, according to their numbers, had said that over 6 million people had attempted at least one order in 2021. The number of people that had grown on that app was by 20 fold. It should be re that should be reason alone right there. As that should prove that should really support what I'm saying that most of the people who came onto these apps was in 2020. Now, because this is their first time experiencing a slowdown, it's like, oh no, what's happening? Well, if you've been on the app 2019 and before, this was this this was this was a common occurrence a common occurrence. And even I admitted that I'd gotten spoiled by, two, by the years 2020 and 2021. But fortunately, I had some experience to draw upon. And fortunately, I also had other apps that helped me to continue to make the money that I've been making. Now, um, that, now, that said, those are just adjustments that you have to make. If you're gonna if you're gonna stay in the gig economy in 2023, keep it in mind you're gonna have to adjust, and the, and the best way to adjust is to always be attuned to customer habits. Also, uh, be aware that apps and technology they change as well. So what's next? New policies, new models, new pay incentives. Now, when these companies introduce this when when these companies introduce these pay models and pay incentives and these new programs. I have come to believe that they are not as not entirely for the driver's benefit, but for the company's benefit in some way, by and large. And that how they came up with all this is as a part of their algorithm because they because now what they need to do is test it out with the drivers in the beta 
beta testing, as they call it, to see if it really works in the algorithm, in the greater scheme of things. But also, um, while it, it's, all, it's all a part of gathering data for the algorithm, it is also ultimately, 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 they want to find out what makes the driver tick that will get the, that will get these orders fulfilled, these rides fulfilled as expeditiously as possible. And for some of these companies, if they can put out as less as less money as possible, they come out ahead. These companies are not getting ahead if everyone were to start maximizing their money the way I do and others do. That's why these companies count on the the, the numbers, the masses, the average person who's not gonna who's not gonna again think through these scenarios as possible. They're gonna count on people just to react to what's in the bold font. They see an order, okay, I'll take it. I'm not gonna think about how many miles it's gonna take me. I'm not gonna think about how much money I'm losing, basically how much I'm paying the company to deliver it. These companies understand this stuff. The, the um, earn by time, the um, top dasher program, um, the the um, $2, a mile, $2 a mile programs in which you're supposed to get higher paying orders based on your acceptance rate. This is all stuff that is fed into the algorithm. This is all stuff that's fed into the algorithm. And what happens is these algorithms understand our tendencies. The algorithms understand our tendencies. It is through the artificial intelligence. It is through the mechanical learning models. This is just part of this is just part of the what I'm sharing with you is just one piece of the entire puzzle that many of us drivers have begun to figure out. But what I'm sharing with you, it is backed up by these companies. They understand our in fact, let's put it like this. When you go on YouTube, when you go on eBay, when you go on Amazon, these companies have already or even Facebook, for example, their algorithm. It's all it's all studying how it's all gathering data in terms of where you go, what's what what products that you what you're likely to look at. And so what happens is when you come on, what happens, they'll start showing you these latest products of things that you've already searched before. Me, since I'm also I also bowl at the professional um, at the PBA level, at the regional pro level, um, when I'm looking for equipment, what happens is once I start looking for equipment and all, and then I, I come back on that phone or the computer, I'll start getting a bunch of stuff for bowling balls. That is the artificial intelligence because it is trying to guess my tendencies. That is the same thing with these order amounts that come out, these type of orders that we get. Now, how do you adapt to these new policies? How do you adapt to these new pricing strategies and all that are implemented by these carriers? How do you adapt to these pricing strategies, these pricing models, these pay models, um, these policies? As best as I know, and from what I can tell, the only way that you can beat these algorithms, the only way that you can beat these algorithms, the only way that you can beat these algorithms is to work multiple apps. These apps cannot deny you the right to work multiple apps. But if you work multiple apps, you stack orders across multiple apps, any way that you can make it happen, you are beating the algorithm because you are gonna make more than what the algorithm intends for you to make. Or what the algorithm has studied what most drivers are going to make. It may not cap you at that amount. And I don't think, I mean, some people may be able to beat it for one day, but these algorithms are gonna take the average, what the average person is making, what they anticipate the average person is making, what they feel the average person is going to make. There was much discussion about $24, $25 an hour on DoorDash. Well, if you make the money that I make, well, it's, which is between $30 and $35 an hour on average, guess what? I am beating the algorithm. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. The next, the next change that drivers have, the, the, the next thing that drivers will always face is economic conditions. Changes in economic conditions. When I first started in the gig economy back in 2016, and I've shared this before, if you recall, gas was around $2 a gallon, if not below $2 a gallon. So it was a driver's market. And so you did not have to spend as much to put money in your tank. On average, I put anywhere between 
$25 and $35 in the tank. Now I'm putting in anywhere between $50 and $60 in the tank. I know that I have different vehicles, but that's how much I'm spending in most cases whenever I go to the gas station. But what brought about the economic change? Well, at least in 2022, it was higher gas prices. Then it was inflation. Inflation caused everything to be more expensive. Gas prices was more expensive. In fact, in the Columbia metropolitan area for a, regular, for a gallon of regular gas, it was as much as $4.89 a gallon. Gas is now, at some places, as low as $2.99 a gallon for regular in this market. Now, how we adapt to economic changes, how we adapt to economic changes also affect how we go about doing our gig hustles on a daily basis. I shared how I managed to do it. I put in so much, when it came to gas, I tried to stretch that $55, $65 as much as I could. And so maybe, um, you know, maybe it was the order selection that I took. Maybe it was the time of day that I went out. Maybe, um, maybe it was the area that I worked, but somehow I managed to make it where even though I was spending twice as much for gas as compared to 2021 or 2020, Somehow I was still able to make money, even slightly more, but I know that also inflation cut into my profit margins. But here we are, gas prices almost come down to the levels that they were a year ago, and I'm starting to see a little more money in the black. But at the same time, I had to adapt, and you have to adapt to economic conditions. The last change, and it's probably the most important change, is you. You. Why I say you? you change also we all say that oh i don't change no but we change we change in our attitude we change in our approach to going about doing business whatever way i mean we may learn how to go about things more efficiently and smarter and that we make more money or we change in such a way that we don't like what we're doing anymore and we're looking for an exit strategy um i mentioned like earlier in the summer that i'd begun to hate the gig economy my attitude had changed. Now, um, I didn't burn out, as some may have suggested, but in some ways, I still hate the gig economy. There are days in which I hate coming out here. I absolutely hate coming out here. I have never said that I love the gig economy, but I do it because, hey, it is the best means of me making money at this time, and at, le at least at this time for me. But hopefully, I can create other means of income to where I may not have to do the may have may not have to do, rely on the gig economy as much as I do. But you, you, you are a big factor in the change. It could be that you you become discouraged with the gig economy. I know back in 2019, I'd actually become discouraged doing gig economy work because I got tired of making no money and then also getting getting pummeled by customers in the customer ratings for reasons unknown. Um, <laughs> I've shared this before, but my customer rating after my first three completed DoorDash deliveries was 2.33. Well, hey, my first my, my customer rating after my first five orders on the ShipIt app was 3.20, so it wasn't too far off. Currently, it's 4.83 on ShipIt, and currently it's 4.96 on DoorDash, but it's taken a lot of work to get it to where it is. Um, and at one point with DoorDash, I got off the app for at least six months before I decided to do it again. So, um, but going back to what an old J school instructor, Bob Jowles told us in that, in that, J1, that J100 level class, this is back over 35 years ago. He said, I'm sorry, not all you're gonna make it. For whatever reason, you're not gonna make it. You may get discouraged, you may get tired of it, you may get married, you may have kids. Um, you, you may have life situations that, that will cause you to do something else. And that's the same thing with the gig economy work. There are changes that happen with you in your life or with you that is gonna call, that you have to adapt to. And so if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer or in any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm Inwood Lane, and as always, may you hustle, and your grind continue.